In this video, I'm going to go over two more examples where I create a system of linear equations to solve two word problems. So for the first one, we're told small test tubes cost 20 cents each and large test tubes cost 55 cents each. We know that we purchased 500 test tubes and the total price was 97.50. We need to determine how much of each type was bought. Now, if you're watching this video, I'm hoping you already saw my previous video going over the types of questions we should ask ourselves when we are given one of these problems and how to solve a system of two linear equations. So here, if you didn't, I would recommend going back and doing that, so I'm going to briefly go through that. But with these types of problems, we need to introduce variables, and more often than that, the variables that are introduced are going to represent our unknowns. So the first thing you want to write down or think about are, what are your two unknowns? And in this particular case, we don't know the number of small test tubes, and I'm going to abbreviate TT for test tubes, and we also don't know the number of large test tubes. And this is purchased, right? We don't know the number purchased. You want to be really specific here. You don't want to just write, you know, the small test tubes, large test tubes. Small what? You have to say the number of small test tubes purchased. So these are the two things we're looking for. So this is what I'm going to set my unknowns equal to. So I'm going to let x equal the number of small test tubes purchased, and I'm going to let y equal the number of large. Now, given that, I need to write two equations and set them in a system. So I need to look at the information given in this problem and write two equations. I know the cost of the small test tubes. I know the cost of the large test tubes. I also know how many total were purchased. So maybe I'll start there. The total purchased were 400. So I know if I take the number of small test tubes purchased and I add that to the number of large test tubes purchased, that's going to equal 400. Good, I have one equation set up for me. The other equation is going to be constructed using the cost, right? I know how much each small one costs and how much each large one costs. I also know the total. So in this example, for 20 cents, so 0 0.20x, 20 cents times the number of small test tubes plus 55 cents times the number of large test tubes, that's going to give me my total. So that's going to be 97.50. I have my system. I know x plus y equals 400. I also know 20 cents times the number of small test tubes plus the cost or how much it's going to cost to buy the number of large test tubes is going to equal the total. Now that I have my two equations set up, I'd like to use the substitution method to solve for x and y. Now, in the previous problems, in the previous videos, we had one of these equations. One of them was already solved for one of the variables. So we had like an x equal to something or a y equal to some other quantity. But here we don't have either one of these equations solved for. So what I can do instead is rearrange these. And I'm going to choose this initial equation here at the top and rearrange. So I'm not going to do anything with this second. I'm not going to do anything with this second equation. All right, that's that's got decimals. It's going to be a little bit more challenging to reorganize that. But what I can do is with this first equation, if I were to subtract a y from both sides, then what I would have is I would have an x equal to 400y, 400 minus y, excuse me. So all I'm doing is rearranging this first equation, solving for one of the values of x. Now, why is that going to be helpful? Because now I know exactly what x is equal to. x is equal to 400 minus y. So anywhere I see an x in this second equation, anywhere I see an x in this second equation, I can put 400 minus y in its place. 
and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pick up this x right here, and instead of writing 20 cents or 0 0.20 times x, I want to multiply 0 0.20 times 400 minus y. I am substituting this value here in for x. Everything else stays the same. The only thing I did there was use the substitution method to solve, or to, excuse me, to substitute this value of 400 minus y in for x. And now what I need to do is to combine like terms. I need to solve this. So I need to distribute. I need to distribute that 0 0.20 times each one of these quantities here. So I'm going to have 80 once I distribute that minus 0 0.20y plus 0.55y equal to 97.50. So I'm just now going to solve this. It looks a little bit more complicated than some previous problems, but really it's just because we have decimals, right? That's it. That's the only difference here. So I'm going to gather my like terms. I'm going to gather these y's here. So if I have a negative 0.20y and I add a value of 0.55, that sum gives me 0.35. Just going through and using my, my properties of equality now, I'm ready to get this y by itself. So I'm going to subtract 80. I'm left with 1750. And now when I divide by 0 0.35, I'm going to bring this over here. Let's see what y is equal to. So if I have 1750 and divided by 0 0.35, y is going to be equal to 50. Now, what did I just find? When I found y equal to 50, what did I find? Let's go back up to the top to see what I described or what I defined as y. I said y was equal to the number of large test tubes purchased. So that means I have purchased, in this case, 50 large test tubes. We still have one unknown, right? We still don't know the number of small test tubes. Now, how am I going to find that? Well, let's go back to the equations, because that's where we have the quantities associated with x and y. And if I look here, I know that x plus y equals 400. Well, I know what y is now. y is 50. So what does that make x? x is going to be equal to 350. So I know there are 350 small test tubes purchased. Here we have our solution. Now you can always go back and plug 350 in for x, 50 in for y into both of these equations and it better work. I'm going to go ahead and do this next example, but if you want to pause the video and try it, please be my guest. So in this problem, we're told a cup is a mixture of 4 milligram and 9 milligram pills. There is a total of 47 pills with a combined weight of 308 milligrams. How many of each pill are in the cup? First, let's write down our unknowns. We don't know the number of 4 milligram pills. And we don't know the number of 9 milligram pills. Those are the two things we don't know, and specifically the number that are in the cup. We can add that too in the cup and in the cup. These are the two things we don't need, we don't know. So let's call, and maybe we'll switch it up a little bit. Let's call A equal the number of four milligram pills, the number, and let's B equal this other unknown, the number of nine milligram pills. So what I need to do is to create a system of two linear equations. I need to use the information in the problem to write two equations. Let's see what information I'm told. The first thing I see, well, I know there's four milligrams in each of the four milligram, and nine milligram, and the nine milligram, that makes sense. There is a total of 47. That tells me that if I take A plus B, the number of each type and add them together, I'm going to get 47 total pills. And now I also know that there's going to be a combined weight of 308 milligrams. So if I have 4 milligrams for each number of 4 milligram pills, and 9 milligrams times the number of 9 milligram pills, 
that's going to give me the total weight, which I know to be 308. I now have two equations, a plus b equal 47, 4a plus 9b equal to 308. What I want to do if I want to use the substitution method to solve, one of, uh, to solve this system, I'm going to rearrange one of these equations for one of the variables. And just looking, I know it's going to be a lot easier to take this top equation and solve it either for a or for b. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to rearrange the top equation, which means the bottom equation is going to stay the same. I still have 4a plus 9b equal to 308. I'm going to subtract b from both sides. I'm going to rearrange this top equation and solve it for a. So I know a is going to equal 47 minus b. I'm just subtracting the b. And this is, I'm allowed to do this. The property of equality tells me I can add and subtract a value from both sides of the equation that does not change the equality in this particular case. Now that I have done that, I specifically know that a is equivalent to 47 minus b. So anywhere I see an a in my second equation, I can put 47 minus b in its place. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to take 4, and I'm going to multiply it not times a, but times 47 minus b. This is the us substituting. All right, that's the substitution. I still have 9b equal to 308. Okay, so I'm going to solve this now. I'm going to distribute 47. I'm going to distribute 47 to both of those quantities. 4 times 47 is going to be equal to 188 minus 4b equal to uh, plus 9b, excuse me, equal to 308. I now have 188. This, If I simplify and combine like terms, that's 5b equal to 308. Now if I subtract the 108, or excuse me, 188 from both sides, I'm going to have 5b equal to 120. And if I divide both sides by 5, I'm going to get b equal to 24. So I have b equal to 24. Well, what was b? Let's go up to the top. b was representing the number of 9 milligram pills. So that's telling me I have... 24 of this type. 24 of this type, and the, the specific type here is 9 milligrams. And now I need to solve for A. So I'm going to take this A plus B equal to 47. You could also take, you know, just plug that into this equation too. We know B is 24. We could plug that in here. But I'm going back to the very original system here. I know what B is. B in this case is 24, so A plus 24 equals 47. A is going to equal 23. So there's going to be 23 of the 4 milligram type. And when I say this, maybe I should change this to of the 9 milligram type. Okay, so please let me know if you have questions on these problems.